here's a question. As the world moves to electric vehicles, when will your petrol or diesel vehicle become worthless? Well, the answer is when the total cost of owning an electric vehicle is less than the petrol or diesel car, even if the fuel was free. I think we all agree that electric vehicles are going to replace ICE vehicles. And you'll probably also agree that sometime in the future, maybe 50 years from now, ICE vehicles are pretty well going to be worthless. But what if I were to tell you that in most parts of the world, your ICE vehicle will be worthless in about 12 years time? Don't believe me? Well, keep watching. So we're going to discuss what is a tipping point. Also, why by 2030, it won't make any sense to own a petrol or a diesel car. Why Forbes magazine consider that ICE vehicles, internal combustion engine vehicles, will be a luxury by 2027. And when will ICE cars be banned? And what happens to their value then? We can show that buying an EV today you'll still be thousands of dollars ahead, even if petrol were free. And also, Elon Musk says it's going to take 30 years to replace all of the ICE vehicles on the planet. Why then is your car likely to be worthless way before then? Don't believe me? Well, write in the comments now if you like, otherwise you might just want to watch this. If you live in Australia, you might think, I'm not seeing many electric vehicles about. There's a few Teslas and the occasional Nissan Leaf, but they don't really seem to be taking off. And that's because Australia is so far behind the rest of the world, we've yet to reach the critical tipping point of just 5% market penetration, where suddenly a new technology just starts to seem to be everywhere. In January of 2022, Norway hit a critical point in its rapid transition to electric vehicles. Now, 84% of all new cars sold have been fully battery electric vehicles. The success of the EV in Norway is evidence that a tipping point has been reached, and when tipping points are reached, there's no going back. EVs are now the de facto choice for a Norwegian motorist. This has put Norway three years ahead of its schedule for phasing out ICE cars altogether. In London, they've reached 5% also, and EVs already seem to be everywhere, plus taxis and buses are also electric, although the UK is still well behind Norway. Why is 5% so important? Well, most successful new technologies, TVs, mobile phones, the internet for example, follow an S-shaped adoption curve. Sales move at a crawl in the early adopter phase, then surprisingly quickly once things go mainstream. So when will there be an Australian tipping point where ICE vehicles start to plummet in value? Right now in Australia, the price of second-hand cars is through the roof due to lack of supply of new vehicles globally and because Australia has not yet reached that tipping point. Very few EVs are seen on our roads. But that's today, 2022. Take a look at what's coming. The United States has crossed the electric car tipping point for mass adoption. Once 5% of new car sales go fully electric, everything changes, according to a Bloomberg analysis of the 19 countries that have already made the EV pivot. Viewers my age will remember the first time you held a smartphone. The devices were weird and expensive then, and less than a decade later, it's unusual not to own one. In the past six months, the United States joined Europe and China, collectively the three largest car markets, in moving beyond the 5% tipping point. If the US follows the trend established by 18 countries that came before it, a quarter of new car sales could be electric by the end of 2025. That would be a year or two ahead of most major forecasts. If you still think changing the world from ICE vehicles to electric is going to take decades, Let's take a look at history. This is a classic photograph of New York in 1900. It shows the streets completely full of horse-drawn carriages and only a single motor car. There were feedlots, saddle makers, buggy repair shops, outfitters and service industries. Only 13 years later, New York is now all cars and only a single horse-drawn carriage. 
the car market share went from 11% to 81% in just 10 years. This all happened while also building two new industries, automotive and oil from scratch, and building new road infrastructure, fighting World War I, as well as the flu pandemic of 1918-19. to This is an example of an automotive tipping point. You wouldn't know it living in Australia, but in 19 other countries around the world, they've already reached this tipping point. The next major car markets approaching this tipping point in 2022 include Canada, Australia and Spain. Continued growth also depends on the ability of automakers and their suppliers to increase production fast enough. Volkswagen, Ford and BMW are each targeting 50% or more of their global sales to be fully electric by the end of the decade. It turns out automakers too have tipping points. Factories must be retooled and supply chains reconfigured. To achieve the most cost savings, the entire vehicle must be redesigned with electrification in mind. Modern car manufacturing is highly automated and does not need armies of manual labour. By 2030, it won't make sense to own a petrol or diesel car. Countries around the world are already mandating the ban of internal combustion engine cars within the next decade. The UK, importantly for Australia, as it's also a right-hand drive market, has moved its ban forward to 2030, as is the same for Japan. Denmark and Washington State in the US, bans are in place from 2030, and California is banning new fossil fuel car sales by 2035. Some are even sooner. Norway is phasing out fossil fuel vehicle sales from 2025. Singapore is banning diesel car and taxi sales from 2025 and new vehicle emissions legislation being debated in the EU is an effective ban from 2025. Australians say they support a ban on petrol and diesel car sales. A survey released in March 2021 by the Australian Institute showed that voters overwhelmingly support a ban by 2035. It's not enough to say that car makers may not have a choice. Countries without targets to drive the acceleration of clean transport risk becoming dumping grounds for the last ICE vehicles, as car makers wring out the last financial returns possible from the old technology. There are some arguments that the internal combustion engine could live on if the fossil fuels that drive them are replaced by e-fuels made from renewable sources. As battery manufacturing costs continue to decline, so too will the cost of electric cars, and switching to e-fuels is not as cheap as it might first sound. Forbes magazine stated that internal combustion cars will be an expensive luxury compared to electric by just 2027. The most significant reason why everyone is not immediately buying an electric vehicle is simply the price. There are other reasons, like inadequate charging infrastructure, but price is usually the problem most people cite. It's a valid concern when an electric car is still ten to $20,000 more than an internal combustion equivalent. But this is a temporary situation, and one that looks like it will be gone in four to six years' time across all vehicle types. However, when people say EVs are too expensive, they assume the relative price right now will be the relative price forever, and that's just not going to be the case. One of the things a lot of people, quite understandably, do not realise about electric vehicles is that they do not get more expensive, they get cheaper. You might say, well, not so far. In fact, the price of Teslas keeps increasing. And for now, you were right. This is contrary to common sense, though, about how car pricing normally behaves. The new 2022 model is usually a little bit more expensive than last year's because in a world where inflation is normal, well, why wouldn't it be? Electric vehicles, however, are as much computing products as they are automotive ones. Computing and technology products do get cheaper, or at least you get more for your money every year. The classic formulation of this is Moore's Law, where the Intel co-founder Gordon Moore stated that the number of transistors on a microchip would double every two years. Now, not all components in an electric vehicle follow this logic. The seats, the interior, the chassis probably do not. 
unless you can make innovations like Tesla's huge metal casting machines that can make half a car chassis in one go. But some of the most expensive elements will get cheaper every year, including the computer controls, screens, and the most expensive component of all, the batteries. There's a lot of talk about the magic $100 per kilowatt hour level for battery cells being the point where EVs reach price parity with internal combustion engines. But there are huge costs in developing a new platform such as the modular electric battery that Volkswagen uses for its ID3 and ID4 cars. This needs to be paid off initially with higher prices. The Bloomberg research cites slightly different years for each vehicle sector with light vans being one of the first to hit parity in 2025. Of course, this is for new cars, and the falling price will take three to five years to filter through to the second-hand market. But when faced with a choice between an internal combustion car or a cheaper electric vehicle that is also cheaper to run, new car buyers will vote with their wallets. Do you really think that there'll be more new petrol stations being built? Or as we can see in London already, Service stations like Shell are installing EV charging stations. Environmental regulations are likely to get much tougher, as the world is currently on track to warm 2.4 degrees. And unless this turns around quickly, expect environmental requirements for the end of ICE cars to end much sooner than 30 years from now. With petrol and diesel prices at the pump rising, are you thinking of switching to an electric vehicle? If so, you're not alone, as can be seen from the Google Trends search data. Australians are increasingly thinking about making the switch to electric vehicles. Could you believe that buying an electric vehicle today will still save you thousands of dollars compared to an ICE vehicle, even if petrol were free? The chart illustrates the relationship between fuel prices and how much better off you are, owning a Tesla Model 3 as an example, versus owning an average Australian internal combustion engine car. As the chart shows, at a petrol price of $2 per litre, you'll be at least $14,193 better off with the Model 3 after three years. But even if the petrol price was to half to $1 a litre, you would still be more than $9,000 in front. Incredibly, even if fuel was completely free, the Tesla Model 3 would still put you in front to the tune of $4,200 over three years. In fact, the petrol price would need to be at negative 84 cents for you to be at a break-even point. Many EV owners charge their cars using a solar PV system, which can produce more than enough power to cover the electricity usage of an average Model 3 several times over. For example, assuming a typical residential system with a 6.6 .6 kilowatt solar panel array and a 5 kilowatt inverter, you can expect it will produce anywhere from 23 to 24 kilowatt hours a day, even in the least sunny parts of Australia. Have a look at my other video called, What Does It Cost to Run a Tesla? In October 2021, Elon Musk said it will take 30 years to fully replace all ICE vehicles. Elon Musk explained, if all new vehicles sold in the world were electric, it would take 20 years at a rate of 100 million vehicles per year to replace the existing 2 billion vehicles currently on the roads. Since that's not going to happen tomorrow, and many drivers will not change their cars just to have an electric model, it will take more than 30 years to replace all conventional cars and EVs. Elon Musk also said, given how quickly the world is shifting to electric vehicles, a petrol or diesel vehicle bought today will probably have a low resale value. It is more likely that the time span for replacing most of the internal combustion engine vehicles in the world will exceed 30 years. Many vehicles will continue to be used as long as their owners are able to buy fuel and the cars will be allowed on public roads. Once the ban on sales of new ICE cars arrives in Australia and the rest of the world, will they become totally worthless? Well, that depends on what it means for you. For the classic and sports car collectors, no, they will not be worthless. Sure, there will still be the classic cars, the 1959 Ferrari 250 GT LWB California Spider is still going to be worth millions. And in Australia, the 1975 Holden Sandman and the HK Monaro GTS 
will still be worth a fortune. For the average road user, however, driving your Toyota Corolla or Mazda 3, yes, it is likely they'll become worthless. So there you have it. 2035 is when I predict that you will buy a petrol or diesel car one day and it will be virtually worthless the next. Yes, it will have some residual value and there will be a long tail of second-hand ICE vehicles for many years after that. But my advice is, don't be spending a lot of money on an ICE car in 2035. I'll take the blue one. Let me know if I'm wrong <laughs> in the comments. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Cheers.